languages, um, languages, history, arithmetic, and music. He became fluent in Italian, German, and French. And his mother was also an aspiring artist herself and really encouraged her son's interest in drawing and painting. His parents decided that Paris was the best environment in which to develop their son's talent. And he began training with the popular portrait artist, Charles Auguste Emile Carlos Duran in 1874. And this Frenchman would have a major impact on the development of Sargent's technique and approach to painting over the next several years. Um, Sargent studied the old masters and was encouraged not to rely on preparatory sketches or drawings when creating a portrait, but instead to begin straight away with the subject's face. Sargent's distinct method of making his portraits sitters shine while also capturing their personalities, aspirations, inclinations, and distinct characteristics really differentiated his work in the portraiture genre from others before him. Hmm. In, oh, excuse me, I went too far. There we are. Uh, in the early 1880s, Sargent regularly exhibited portraits at the Salon, and these were mostly full-length portrayals of women and received quite high acclaim. A portrait of Madame X is his most controversial work and actually now considered one of his best works. Um, it was also the artist's personal favorite. So when unveiled in Paris at the 1884 Salon, it aroused such a negative reaction that it likely prompted Sargent's move to London. Um, Sargent's self-confidence had led him to attempt a very risque experiment in portraiture, but this time it kind of unexpectedly backfired. Um, this painting was actually not commissioned by Madame X, and he pursued her for the opportunity, which is really unlike most of his portrait work where the clients would seek him out. Um, it took well over a year to complete the painting. Uh, the first version of the portrait of Madame uh, Gautreau, which was her name, uh, with the famously plunging neckline, white powdered skin, arrogantly cocked head, um, featured an intentionally suggestive off the shoulder dress strap, which made the overall effect more daring and sensual. And Sargent actually repainted the strap to its over the shoulder position to try and dampen the Fuhrer, but the damage had been done. Um, French commissions dried up for him and he told his friend in 1885 that he even contemplated giving up painting for music or business. And the concept of painting a portrait that speaks to the sitter's character was an entirely modern one. It's also said that the artist drew and painted more than 30 studies of Gautreau over the course of several months in its preparation, in the end using an entirely different pose than that originally intended, as you can see here by the different sketches on the slide. Um, English critics, after he moved, were not warm at first, faulting Sargent for his clever or Frenchified handling of paint. However, after some critical acclaim for some landscape work, he was soon busy with portraits again. Um, here are a few selections of some of his most well-regarded female portraits. Number two of Lady and You is said to be his most beautiful and genteel portrait. But you can see how every portrait is so personalized to the character of the individual. For example, portraits one and two are both sitting, but you can see based on the color palette and the posture that it seems Maud Coates is more confident and headstrong, whereas Lady and You is more feminine and demure. And even number five, Elizabeth is looking more harsh with the dark dress and the kind of sassy pose, um, as well with the standing portraits, number four and six. Winifred is placed between the mantle and a wall, which kind of portrays some shyness, whereas the confident open posture of Millicent suggests a more extroverted woman. So this slide is actually dedicated to longtime SMA supporter, JB. Uh, so this painting depicts two small children dressed in white who are lighting paper lanterns as day turns to evening. They're in a garden strewn with pink roses, accents of yellow carnations and tall white lilies. Uh, the two subjects of the painting are the daughters of illustrator Frederick uh, Barnard, a friend of Sargent's. Dolly on the left was 11 years old and Polly on the right was seven years old and they were chosen as the subjects for their blonde hair. Um, the title comes from the refrain of a popular song called Ye Shepherds Tell Me by Joseph Mazingi. Um, and it was a pastoral trio of male voices which mentions, quote, 
A wreath around her head, around her head she wore carnation, lily, lily, rose. The work is set in an English garden at Farnham House in the Cotswolds, where Sargent spent the summer of 1885, shortly after moving to England from Paris to escape the scandal caused by Portrait of Madame X. Um, Sargent wanted to capture the exact level of light at dusk. So he painted the picture en plein air, uh, which is outdoors and kind of in the impressionist manner. Every day from September to November of that year, he painted a few minutes when the light was perfect, which kind of gives the picture an overall purple tint of evening. Um, you can see it was made into a US stamp at one point. And there's another rendition of some of his floral work with roses from that same year. This painting is kind of a prime example of the commissioned portraits of the upper classes that eventually earned Sargent fame. Uh, pictured are Adele Meyer, her son Frank, and daughter Elise. The family's attire and the furniture included within the image evoke the height of opulence in 18th century Britain. The elaborately painted gilt sofa, patterned gilt sofa and the heavy kind of iridescent rose silk of Mrs. Meyer's gown look like something out of the palace of Versailles. Um, and Sargent purposefully surrounded Meyer with objects of sumptuous luxury in order to emphasize her reputation as kind of a lavish member of the London upper crust and uh, the placement of Mrs. Meyer front and center with her children largely hidden from view behind the couch suggests that Mrs. Meyer was more inclined to highlight her own glamour as well as that of her surroundings than to you know, waste canvas space on her children. <laughs> Here are a couple famous male portraits that Sargent uh, did. A story about Roosevelt's portrait was that they were kind of walking around the White House grounds looking for locations to have the portrait sittings when all of a sudden Roosevelt turned around and put his hand on the banister and Sargent knew immediately that that had to be the pose for the portrait. Um, and the portrait of Stevenson is actually the third of three that Sargent did of him. In this one, Stevenson is frail and in bad health. He's kind of anchored to the stable wicker chair, though his lankiness remains evident in his long crossed legs, which extend to the edge of the frame. And amid this stillness, Sargent painted the lush carpet with these energetic dabs. Sargent worked on this for a staggering 29 years. Um, in an essay on this mural, Megan Weeks states that, quote, triumph of religion adorns the walls and ceilings of a vaulted skylit chamber on the third floor of the Central Library in Copley Square in Boston. Spanning 84 feet in length and 23 feet in width, the murals are accessible either by elevator or via a long flight of sandstone steps. Both means transport patrons, patrons to the gallery with a sense of darkened anticipation before the doors and stairs open to reveal a space bathed in the glow of gilded relief and warmed by rich color. So there's the idea of the color that um, Jacques and AJ were talking about, this kind of warm brown um, Sargent was given free reign for the idea of what he wanted to paint and decided to portray different religions like paganism, Judaism, and Christianity. And Sargent drew on his extensive travels to create a mix of cultures and religions. So speaking of travel, Sargent was well-versed in it. Uh, growing up, as I mentioned, he lived somewhat of a nomadic life with his expatriate parents throughout Europe. And that joy of travel stuck with him. Um, he loved the city of Venice, visited many times and completed many watercolors while staying there. Um, in fact, he was even compared to Winslow Homer, our artist from last week in terms of their use of watercolor paintings that portray nature. But as well, Sargent did a lengthy trip through the Middle East, uh, which was then called the Ottoman Levant. And he traveled through Syria, Jerusalem and, and Beirut and learned a lot about Arab and uh, Bedouin culture. General Officers of World War I was commissioned by South African financier, Sir Abraham Bailey. Sargent was initially unwilling to take on such a large project, um, but eventually took the commission in January of 1919 and began work in 1920. Sargent found it difficult to find a suitable composition for so many full length portraits in one piece. Um, and Sargent actually himself foresaw a quote, horrible failure with this piece. 
But if you ask me, it turned out pretty well. <laughs> Sargent died in 1925 and is buried at the Brookwood Cemetery in Surrey, England. He is considered the leading portrait painter of his generation, if not American history, and his impact upon the art world is so difficult to overstate. Sargent created over 2,000 watercolors, 900 oil paintings, and a staggering number of works on paper. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So, really enjoyed your talk. I'm actually looking forward to seeing those uh, murals at the Boston Library this weekend. AJ, before we move on to our next segment, you know, we should probably mention, um, you know, the, the uh, loss of, that, that occurred uh, last week in the art world. Yeah, uh, Eric Carl, who we've covered before in the past in our talks, uh, passed away just recently. He was a beloved artist for children's books. Uh, you might all remember The Hungry Caterpillar, as well as a fine artist in his own right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 